everyone, welcome to today's video. We are going to look at Bitcoin in detail. Are we about to fall? Let's find out. So hi, welcome everyone, hope you're good. If you're new, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell button, thanking you. Also, obviously if you follow me on social media, my Twitter's kind of flourishing at the moment, my Instagram is as well, and I've also got TikTok, if you wanna jump in on TikTok as well. He, <laughs> yeah. Anyways, on the screen, European stocks fall. I wanna do stocks first because there's an announcement today coming from the president about China and the tensions. He's not very happy. Certain things have happened. He's gonna address it today in a conference. Stand by. I think there's gonna be a bit of interest in what's happening. If I just quickly look at what happened yesterday. Yesterday, it was a good day yesterday until the last hour or so when he started speaking. A lot of things fell very, very fast. As you can see, yesterday, boom, bang. Futures this morning, not looking great neither. Gold is also rallying quite high today. It's doing quite good and silver. So that would indicate that there's a bit of a change in the weather of people's mindset and thoughts. But let's go back to Bitcoin because things are happening with Bitcoin. As you know, this has been my analysis for a while, right? Do, 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 Okay, series of lower highs. We've also had lower lows in certain time frames as well. Key. We're going to talk about that in more detail because there's certain things that are happening that you probably never even notice is happening right now. There's a lot of whales playing around. There's a lot of things happening. And I personally believe it is a distribution section now of the charting in terms of we're going to return to that phase where we're going to give back the money and we're going to gradually just drip feed back down to some support levels. Whether you like it or not, I don't care, right? Market cycles move in certain ways. We can't just go up, it'll be boring. We've got to come up and down. It annoys me because when I go onto Twitter and flick them through and we get like a little price rise, like, oh, hoo, hoo, like we'll go up $200. You got the bulls going, ha, 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 short, short, as wrecked, wrecked, wrecked. In reality, not so much, right? I'll explain how I do things. Now, a lot of people are quick to jump in the comments when I'm going short. They tweet me, they go, ha, ha, ha. People don't realize that I'm actually holding Bitcoin at the same time. Like I always hold a winning ticket. It's like the Willy Wonka sort of scene where I've got the golden ticket. I will always hold Bitcoin, but I will always aim to grow it. Whether it works or not is no matter, you know, it takes time. I trade a percentage of that valuation with leverage to counterbalance what I can risk at any point. I can use whatever the hell I want, and I'm a positional holder. I can press the short button at any point and know that I won't get liquidated. Likewise with this, I have a short on right now, my liquidation price is 13K. I will make thousands, but only lose hundreds. It doesn't make any difference in my mindset or anything in terms of what I do. So if you're learning from that in terms of what you do in terms of a trading, investing, accumulation, whatever, always keep something just in case something goes parabolic mental. We've all been there. We've all seen what happened. And I've already mentioned on numerous occasions how little I put into crypto and made a lot of money. It's just one of those things. It happened. I'm not going to give up that opportunity again. I have buy orders in low on certain things like Ethereum. Yeah, cool, happy days. But at the same time, I'm still trading now. I'm still short on Ethereum too. I think Ethereum will eventually come down. Anyways, what's happening? We have this, the interesting element of CME derivatives expiry dates coming today. Um, that's always gonna be key, but these like, yeah, we'll see what happens. Obviously, we're close gaps. We've closed gaps. These are the gap at 11K. I very much doubt we're going to get there with the world and the market and stuff. Obviously, we've got a pandemic. We've got high employment rates. We've got all kinds of stuff happening with the likes of social media getting locked down at the moment due to Trump. Another story. Um, you've obviously got the China tensions. We've got all kinds of interesting issues that could come out the back of the pandemic in terms of supply and demand issues with property prices, uh, the automobile, aviation, all kinds of stuff. It looks like it is rigged in certain ways where we've gone to a certain point. When you look at the SPX and the, you know, the, the likes of the Dow Jones, we are at the top level resistance level here where we could just go, ooh, bang. We could just slam again easily. And if there's a lot of interesting 
issues with the China and US trade wars essentially could spark a bit of a downturn. So this is happening. Futures will end. People have to close their contracts and open new ones. Obviously, this is all starting to show here. But ultimately, we always get a bit of a rumble in the market on the closing days. We've also got a key closing month as well for Bitcoin, which I'll go over the chart in a bit. But I always get questioned about, well, what phase are we in? It looks like we're in distribution in terms of we're going to be looking to sell large chunks of Bitcoin into the market to gradually decrease the price. When you look at the market structure, and I'll come on to an image in a second of um, Capo of Crypto on Twitter, who openly says this, and has been saying this for about a few weeks now, and it's starting to look very, very similar to what the pattern should show, where we've started to show that they are gonna be large term sellers. We've also had the issues of large tether prints as well. You gotta remember that over the last few weeks. Random tether prints, the most tether that's been printed for a long, long time randomly pushing the market and it's like mm, this is a bit weird we've got people not working unemployment we've got you know pandemic we've got people not leaving the house but bitcoin's pumping it's because the stock market is pumping at the same time it is very very in tune with the stock market so that's why i'm issuing warning signs thinking well if you're thinking that everything's pink and rosy fluffy lovely and awesome just stand by because we might get a bit of a bit of a rocky road in the next few weeks, in my viewpoint. So, open interest. When you look at the likes of this, this is always interest. When you start to look at the interest of, you know, the futures market. And OKEX is essentially where the whales are playing around. They are huge. And I said at the start of this video, a bit of a tab of a giveaway. Now, ultimately... There is an interest in this exchange ever since the BitMEX dump. Basically, where they're absolutely radical with everyone. A lot of people jump into this, and I recommend this exchange anyway, because it's one of the better choices out there. It's got a good engine for the futures, and also, most importantly, if you're trading different types of contracts. But ultimately, this is starting to show interest that a lot of people are starting to look at certain things where the price is going up, but the intra open interest is going down. It means less openings. It's getting interesting now to see the pattern of behavior and where and who is pumping this. Another element as well, this again, got to keep an eye on the OKEX whales. They've been pumping certain things, pushing it, bang. Why? Well, it all goes back down to this distribution area where they will look to basically change the mindset of investors and basically trap you. Simple as that where they're gonna distribute it into a higher little zone and they'll start gradually adding out and then it will eventually, over time, slowly drop the market. It takes time. And just to go back onto Capo's uh, Twitter here, just to give you an insight, this is what it looks like. So you got, this was XRP, cool. Right, go to the next image. This is what it, obviously, this is how it kind of looks, where you get these little levels where it crunches it and then eventually it will like start to distribute up into these levels and then it will eventually distribute again and then it will eventually just start to roll over eventually because there'll be more sellers coming into the market due to panic. There'll be more sellers at a high point which will eventually back down that 20k, uh, 20K that 10k level that we're kind of struggling with. So when you look at analysis, this whole area if you look at the weekly, for example, just the weekly kind of paints it for you, realistically. We know that this level is key, right? The 10K psychological level. The chances of us getting up there is, you know, when you consider the factors of all, all the things I've pretty much said in terms of like how the world is kind of patterned right now, no one's going to shoot Bitcoin to the moon in that way. I don't think anyway. It's not, not financial advice. I think it's very, very unlikely. The sentiment hasn't you know, it's not there, it's not bullish enough in my eyes, there's not enough people coming into the market, there's not enough adoption yet, there's not enough people using it in reality when you think about it. There's people obviously buying at low points. And this is where I think, where, in my eyes, you've got Goldman Sachs, personal opinion, I think they're literally getting positioned, I think they're gonna be coming into the market at some point when it's low. I don't think they're gonna buy now, no one's gonna buy now. You've got all kinds of information of people buying Bitcoin, but you got to think, well, when did they start buying Bitcoin? Did they start buying down here or did they start buying up here? Chances are, probably down here. Chances are, if that's the case, we're probably going to go back down there and address some situations. The monthly level, though, is absolutely key when you look at Bitcoin, right? Look at it. 
right? This is key. I personally believe over the month we'll probably close below 9.3. In, that's what I feel that has to happen and probably will happen due to the contract, due to all kinds of stuff happening in the world. Today, in my viewpoint, is a very, very key day. When you look at the daily though, and you start zooming out and you look at that overall structure and you look at all these lower highs and you're thinking, well, where's you gonna go? Well, there's a lot of lower highs there. If we shoot up to like 11K levels, it invalidates the whole structure of the move and we may well turn bullish then for that, for that matter. But I don't think it's gonna happen. I think this is looking like a distribution area where you start looking at these tweets and you start thinking, well, it looks very, very, looks very, very ominous that, well, we're gonna be releasing stuff into the market. And if you've got big money at the top playing around a 10K psychological level, it's probably not gonna end well if you're holding your Bitcoin. So there you go. Another thing though, just to give you an insight, I mentioned this at the start, doing a little giveaway. This is not provided by me, it's provided by the exchange. If you want to jump in, crack on. It's free to do so. People are starting to get into tune with this exchange in the in, in the sphere of the world that I'm in. Obviously, you know, it's it's an interesting exchange where it's only really big in Asia, but actually it's getting quite big in the in the UK, the US, Canada, etc., around Europe. So a lot of whales have jumped onto it since BitMEX kind of went and perished a little bit. So look, if you're looking for liquidity and you're looking for a good choice, this one's a good one. If you sign up, make one trade, you get a chance of winning 100 US Tether. Ciao, ciao. See you later.